My name is John Passfield, and the title of this reading will be John and Cassandra, Video 5, Meeting Cassandra, Part 3. So the third meeting between John and Cassandra. So here is my novella. John and Cassandra, Fair is Fair, with my name on the cover. Apollo the God is the large fellow. The two little people are John, who is an, an actual human, and Cassandra, who is a human character in the story. Here's a summary of the story on the back. John Passfield contemplates writing a novel about the mythological figure Cassandra. Suddenly he finds himself in the presence of her tormentor, Apollo, the god who seemingly as a whim has brought a catastrophic curse down on the head of an innocent human. The curse is that she will be able to know the future, but that no one will believe her when she tells them or warns them of the future. John sees Cassandra as a mythical creature whose helpless situation epitomizes all that is wrong on the planet Earth. What a chance to confront a representative of the gods, ask him to explain such actions, and demand an immediate end to all the agony in the world. So, in chapter 7 of his daydream about Cassandra, John meets the Trojan princess for the third time. So that's on page 39, chapter 7. Here we are. So Cassandra speaks to John. <clears throat> oh, why have you come back, John? Do you enjoy bringing terrible news? At least Apollo is indifferent. He lets me suffer without his presence. He doesn't watch me writhe and squirm. You know... Your friendship brings about, brings almost, sorry, I'll start that again. You know, your friendship brings almost as much pain as Apollo's enmity. You know what I go through, and yet you do nothing to alleviate my burden. I assume you only come back to see me tortured before your eyes. The kind of friend whose heart rises up as mine sinks down. Okay, then we leave out a page of imagery and go to the second segment of Cassandra speaking to John. You are so cruel, John. You are as cruel as is Apollo, as you know the agony that I go through, and yet you refuse time after time to act on my behalf. You profess to offer sympathy, but... You leave and come back with empty hands. Your heart is a fistful of ice, the frozen flint of a mountain pass. You look on cruelty in the extreme and are not moved. Perhaps if Apollo could see me suffer, as you can see me now, he would relent and lift the burden and bring me more comfort than I've ever gotten from you. Okay, then we leave out another page of imagery and go to this third segment of Cassandra speaking to John. Oh, I am bitter, John. I am disillusioned. I am disappointed in you. I had hopes that you were a new kind of being, a being who had power to intervene with the gods, who would bring empathy and kindness to Mount Olympus, who would who would open up the heads of the gods and pour therein a full measure of compassionate ideas, bring them gently to a knowledge of what it is like to be a human, cause them to rededicate their powers to easing the burden of the living of these tragically human lives. End the wars, ease the suffering, do away with the loss and the heartbreak and the strife. So that was the third segment. Let's go to the fourth segment. Again, a page or so away with other imagery uh, commenting on this, which we're not reading right now. So here's the fourth segment of Cassandra speaking. You were my hope for a change, John. Neither a human nor a god. Now I see you are just a human after all. Oh, John, you seem to be so compassionate. I prayed that you were what you seemed to be, and yet I see now that you can't 
or won't do anything to relieve this curse that is hanging over my head, this cloud that rains down blood on all who dwell within the environ of my person. I'm not the only, I'm not only the bearer of misery, John, I am the cause of all the misery in others' lives. Oh, don't see me as simply Cassandra. My life is not what this is about. I represent the accumulated misery of all our kind. You are a human. You are a human. That's what you have told me again and again. Well, see me then as the human of humans, the repository of all the accumulated misery of all the people who are cursed to live on this earth with all the weight of the blood-soaked centuries crushing them down. Your visit has been such a failure. You are my final, faintest hope. If your presence is not the answer, John, then I see no hope at all for humankind. Well, that was the third visit of John and Cassandra. In the structure of his daydream, John sees Cassandra in every second chapter, and in the in-between chapters, he goes to see Apollo, the god who has caused Cassandra to live in such misery by placing a curse on her life. Twice now, John has asked Apollo why he is being so cruel and whether or not he will be willing to relieve Cassandra of that curse. In this chapter, chapter 7 of the daydream, John reports back to Cassandra that Apollo will not yield. So what we have here is two humans who find themselves amid the realities of what it is to be human here on this earth. And unfortunately, seems to be a natural human tendency to take one's misery out on another human. I'm sure that one can hardly blame Cassandra for the frustration that she feels. However, it's interesting that in the ranking of John and Apollo, the god who laid upon her the original curse, she ranks John as more of a tormentor than Apollo, right? So Apollo put the curse on her, but now she's saying God, John is causing her more pain than Apollo. Why? Because he's not helping her. The task of every writer, it seems to me, is to capture as much as is possible what it is to be a human being here on this earth. It'd be nice to write cheerful stories, but this is the story as I, the writer, imagine it to be. It's also the story that John, the character, uh, dreams in his daydream. However, perhaps things will get better. There is one more meeting with Apollo and one more meeting with Cassandra in John's daydream. Let's hope that the news that John brings from Apollo will make a little more positive meeting with Cassandra than this one has been. Okay, so here is my novella, John and Cassandra, Fair is Fair. It's found on Amazon where there's more information. My publisher's website is rocksmillspress.com where there's more information as well. On my website, johnpassfield.ca, there are two free books. These are full-length books. They're free. Um, you click on the cover icon, and there they are to read on your screen. Now, one is a planning notebook in which I plan and write the novella and discuss all the topics that, uh, that the topic of uh, Cassandra and the Trojan War and all wars and the way humans interact occurs to me. Or, uh, uh, and then the second one is the uh, reflective journal. When I polish a novel or novella, I write about what I've just accomplished, where I'm going from here. So it's all about writing, but it's also all about human nature and human thinking. I think human thinking is my biggest topic. How do humans think? Uh, and that's covered in both those books. So have a look at johnpassfield.ca if you're interested. Lastly, I'll just say thank you for watching this video.